nine knots. We should have really reduced sail, but um, we didn't. We one of the most scariest situations. We pulled our sheet, our Genoa sheet, off the um, propeller. It sort of melted itself on. It's got in the lee of an island, and yeah, it's a current's race, and still she's struggling here, but. Welcome to our life on the sea. We are an Australian family that fell in love with the ocean and living on a boat traveling. I'm Sarah and together with Lee and our two kids, Taj and Bella, we are documenting our travels as we sail the world one island at a time. This lifestyle is fun, adventurous, humbling and incredibly challenging, but we wouldn't have it any other way. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to our channel to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. It was just an interesting night last night. We were wing on wing doing about eight and nine knots. We should have really reduced sail, but um, we didn't. Uh, we had one reef in and um, 40 plus knots decided to hit us. And uh, Sarah was downstairs asleep. I was up top, and uh, by the time she got up top, um, yeah, we had full 40 knots on us. I wasn't wing asleep. On wing. It was a funny story. I wasn't asleep because I'd only just gone down, so I was probably maybe just drifting into sleep. But Lee banged, and you know when you I, you really startled me, and I got up and I was razzing my my blanket must have been around my feet. <laughs> And I tripped over and fell on Bella and I couldn't move, I couldn't get up. And Lee's banging like I was ignoring him and I'm like trying to get out of bed. <laughs> fell down. Probably one of the most scariest situations we had because we rounded half up and because I was wing on wing, I had the car right out that way and the sea come up and I couldn't turn into the sea and then the pressure on that, everything was just screeching and growing. I was waiting for this to let go, the preventer, and um, potentially bring down the rig. There was that much force on it. Um, I managed to get it round, had one sheet go around the prop. Uh, this ended up wrapped around the prop. So Sarah got that off this morning. Pull our sheet, our Genoa sheet off the um, propeller. It sort of melted itself on. It's got in the lee of an island and yeah, it's a current's race and still she's struggling here, but... Um... In, uh, under the water, trying to get the rope off the propeller. It's all melted and like stuck around it. I did my best. I got all the bulky part off, but there's still some around there, so I'll have to get it on scuba or when we stop. Last night was not fun. I had a sleep yesterday afternoon. A little nap, he's had little naps, but he hasn't really slept for oh, over 24 hours. What a night. I haven't slept yet. I'm it's so a nightmare. Tired. I haven't either. So let's go get one of the kids. <laughs> Conditions are nice now. It's only like 12, 13 knots aft. And, uh... Yeah, we really just wanted to stop this morning, have a sleep, get the rope off the prop and kind of just clean up and reset. We did find this little atoll. And we just, it was early and the entry just, the overtail looked okay. But we still had 20 knots on the beam trying to enter it and we just thought, you know what, it's not worth it. No. And we got another 24 hours to get to somewhere where we can actually stop, so yay! <laughs> this is what happens. <laughs> oh dear. Messy, messy. The wind dropped off, but there was enough for us to get the pole back out with a little breeze from behind also hoping that it would ease the side roll we had going. Luckily, the sheet that got wrapped around the propeller was still long enough to be used. Steady her up a bit. Up and take the pole. Up, hey. Team girls is on watch. I don't know if you can see it. You can't really see it, but there's a ship here. It's coming up straight behind us. The captain assures that it's okay. 
Um, he's just going to bed. Come close though. We are going six knots and uh, the wind is straight behind us. About 24 hours till we get to an island where we can stop, drop the anchor, clean up the prop and sort ourselves out and keep moving. Night number two. We are pulled out again, but uh, we've got a triple reef main in ready for this evening and yeah, not a lot of head sail out. We're doing seven knots, so that'll do us. We're not going to push it and just, we're down a radar tonight, so there is ships about, but he's on the AIS. Most of them I've seen last night and today have all been AIS, so that's a good thing. Don't have the radar, so we're not going to see any uh, little storm cells moving through, so we'll just have to really keep an eye out on the uh, wind gauge and see for any variances that might get to us and surprise us at 3 o'clock in the morning. It can't be like last night, so it's got to be better. It's got to be better. And we should arrive about early hours in the morning at the anchorage. Drop the peak and have a good sleep. So we got something to look forward to. I think that was the hardest thing last night. We had nowhere to go. It was just, it was just real crap. Trying to put on us while we the Little mother hen was, yeah. She went and got all our life jackets, made sure we had harnesses. She was like up on the deck with me, trying to make sure I didn't fall overboard. It's a little, little champion, but. I freaked out when she came up. I felt a hand on my back and I was like, oh, why are you on the deck? <laughs> Get off the deck. And then a wave like smashed over us and soaked us. And then I was just, made me more nervous you being there. So we just uh, dropped anchor, a little group of islands. Um, yeah, we had a pretty good night. Nothing like the night before, thank goodness. So we might have sailed most of it. There wasn't as much wind. Going to go under and try and get the rest of the rope, but it's around the shaft. Um, it was pretty tight. I couldn't get it off when I was free diving. Need a knife, need some time down there. So um, we we'll have to put our dive gear on and go down and check it out. So we we'll go get our scuba gear and uh, get ready. <laughs> go in the water. And I didn't have much luck free diving last time. I've got my, uh, oh, they're my fins, they're not going to help me breathe. <laughs> but this will help me stay under the water longer. Anyway, I'm going to take you guys down and we're going to get this line off of our shaft. Got the majority of it off, but. So what's happened? I can't, I can't reach it. <laughs> what happened was it's all, I don't know if you can see that, but it's all melted. It's obviously, it was wrapped around, we didn't know we were using the engine. All right. A little bit of a pry tool there. It's kidding me up. Um, Stanley knife. I'll leave the blade in for now. Chop, chop. Thank you. <laughs> um, she's successful at that. Get the crop clean while we're down there too. Any barnies? Scrub and brush. <laughs> Get to work, darling. I was gonna go down and look at the fish. <laughs> Let's go diving. Past the past few years. Oh, that's. Look at that. Convenient. It's not on there. Oh, the lips actually bang on it. Oh. Okay, guys. Let's go scuba diving. Oh, I will open up my eyes so I can see the light. Oh, and I'll try to spread my wings so I can fly. Oh, and the darkness starts to fade. Feels like things are gonna go my way. shoulders cause I know yesterday ain't coming back mm -hmm. I'm gonna let the past stay in the cold I will listen to the ocean that it's unsaid words be spoken and I'll let my mind be carried by the waves Try to spread. 
200 now. We're about 24 hours till the top of Bali. Or the end of Java. I don't know where we are, to be honest. <laughs> We're about two days away from Bali. <laughs> So Lee dropped one this morning. Lee, Tasha has better luck with fish than Daddy, so he's yeah. given it over. <laughs> That's fear in me. See if he gets this one in. I dropped a nice mahi this morning like this. We haven't had fish for days. When Tasha's got the ability, we'll soon see. Tasha was feeling when he learnt that Daddy dropped a fish though. He's like, why? I'm so hungry. <laughs> There's a mountain coming up on us too. Yeah, we got a little tug with a big load. We don't like those guys. Not them. But they always seem to be just really inconveniently placed in the ocean. <laughs> and they like to turn erratically in front of you. <laughs> it looks like it. <laughs> I think it was. Barracuda! Ding, da, da, ding, da, ding. It's not as fun, is it, winding in something? <laughs> boring. It's not as fun as fearing? Yeah, it's boring. It's boring? You don't get it. You don't get the adrenaline. No, not at all. Look at those choppers. I'm gonna let him go, baby. Yeah? Yeah. I'm gonna throw it on the towel. Oh. See you, Barry. Slimy, stinky things. Now, well, now we're just gonna be hungry. All oh, right, we just threw back a barracuda. Um, people ask all the time whether what fish have segatira or is there segatira in Indonesia, and uh, we don't know the the answer. Uh -oh. <laughs> we know that barracuda have segatira in Australia, and you know we're not that far, so why wouldn't they have it here? We don't know. Anyway, we threw it back. So, so that's why we threw it back, because everybody always goes, why'd you throw it back? You could have eaten it. That's why. And the tug is getting closer and closer. Is it a big one? It's a tug towing a big load. So the, the danger with the tug isn't the tugboat or the load, it's the steel cable that is connected from the tug to its load. They don't go very fast, but what they are good at is doing a Silly maneuvers in front of boats. <laughs> hey, they always just turn. Oh, I'm actually, you must be freaking out about me. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a look at this. Oh, Lee's um, purposely going over near a tug. Don't do that. Well, it's daylight hours, we can see what's going on. Lee's trying to get close to it, which is usually the other way around, but it is daylight, so if you were watching back in the day when we were, actually it was about here, wasn't it? Uh, we were traveling along at night and I ended up being right next to a tugboat. Wasn't the best situation, but luckily, Lee pulled us out of it. <laughs> Ever since I've had a massive fear of night sailing and also tugs, ships, boats in general. Yeah, so these tugs, especially of a night, um, I'm assuming just because they're so low to the water, their AIS signal, I don't know, we seem to pick them up when they're about three, four nautical miles away from us. Which, there's still a fair bit of distance, but you like to sort of prepare for them. They're usually going pretty slow. They're usually doing about three to five, six knots sort of thing, max. Um, it's just the tow line can range from you know, anywhere from 20 to 60 meters sort of thing so if you're lucky enough to come in between the tug and the load and hit that cable many of masts have been dismasted especially if they don't have their AIS on um, we're down a radar so generally you pick the tug up on the AIS and it says tug on the tow but then the lights on the load are non-existent so it really helps if you've got the radar you can pick the load up too Sometimes. The orientation Some of, the... of which way they're going and where the load's positioned and go from there. Sometimes the load has like a really little dim light on it, but yeah. most cases it doesn't. So this guy's doing about three knots. He's got a 30 metre um, cable between him and his load, so it's not too bad. 
Yeah, uh, this one's pretty close, hey? Because some of them are really far behind. Yeah, so I assume it's the weather conditions and the load size of how much cable they run. But, um, I know yeah, that, that one nearly hit us that time. That was really far behind him. Yeah. Further away in the camera, I think, but he is one kilometre away, roughly. It's 0.3 nautical mile away, and it's too close. The captain is telling me that's too close to be. That load is definitely like closer to him than usual. Yeah. Usually they're so far away. But look, you can't see nothing in between. And if that is night time and you can't see that and you go in between them, in there, Probably. you're in big trouble. Every time I go lie down, he either gets a fish or we have to do something. So it's very inconvenient. Hopefully he pulls this one in. <laughs> oh, I want to depower the boat, but I. Nah, mate, we don't depower the boat. Use those arms. <laughs> this is your daily workout. You can do it. You got this. Deep breaths. This is what giving birth is like, I can imagine. Yeah, total same. <laughs> go, mate, go! Get it in! Jumping. Now nah, we're hungry, we need this. It's not easy if we depower. Yeah, no, nah, mate, we're not so. slowing down. <laughs> That's a big deal. You can pull anything in with them arms. Oh, you look so amazing! Go! It's just because it's you know, doing freaking six, seven knots. Yeah, you always say it's big and then it's not. And it's embarrassing. <laughs> Look at this technique. He knows what he's doing. He's absolutely killing it. He's getting it in. We didn't have to depower the boat. What a man! Watch out, you're gonna hook Dana. <laughs> you're gonna get a gap in your back. It's okay, we got it under control. Another one. Whoa! Hello. Not from a good gaff, but got him. Straight from the ocean and into the pan. Ladies and gentlemen, when you catch a little bit of mahi, it turns into a fish burger. Makasi. Oh. Well, it's that time of night, guys. We're reefing the sail. Yep. Even though we're hooting along very don't nicely. Like, don't like eight knots. Don't like to slow down, but hey, don't like um, 40 knots up our bum. <laughs> Safety first, look at you, Mr. Hey. Safety. I don't want to fall in either and have Sarah try and find me in the dark. And when we're doing eight knots, she sort of disappear real quick. Yeah, chances I'm going to find you are pretty low, so I'd clip on. <laughs> sail means reducing the sail down so there's not as much sail up. So basically we are just dropping some of our main sail into the sail bag so Catalpa doesn't get overpowered by strong winds.
darling. So it's just getting dark and uh, there's some darkness over in the distance there. It's pr approaching pretty quick. We've just dropped, we we'll briefed the mainsail and we've uh, pulled in the headsail. So we are prepared. What it's going to bring, we do not know. We were well prepared and the night sail was actually okay. Here's uh, the fish cakes mum's made from the mahi dad caught last yesterday. And they're bloody delicious. They are. If I do so, say myself. Bit of mayonnaise, bit of sweet Bloody chili. amazing, darling. Tides on watch, keeping us safe. Good morning. We anchored last night. We pulled up and uh, found a little spot to anchor because we're super tired. About to pull anchor from there and head to Bali. It's only uh, 60 nautical miles away. Second hand, I felt a bit forgotten. Not your plan, but now the days of silence outgrow the fun things we have done. But tell me, do you want to carry on? 